Pondon Mill. It's a very special place. I come here for peace, for beauty, for creativity and originality. There is nothing like it anywhere around. My name is Rob Halfon. I'm the MP for Harlow in Essex and I'm here at Panda Mill, a place I've described as the most romantic place in Essex, but actually it's a lot more than that. It is a place of beauty and of creativity and it's been here since the 19th century. In fact, if you go back to the Doomsday Book, Harlow Pandan Mill was mentioned even at that time. But as you can see behind me, this mill is full of artist studios and all kinds of creative activities. It's a very special place and all of us in Harlow are very proud that we have Pandan Mill. Having invested no less than 46 years into Pandan Mill, founder and owner Sally Anderson, an artist and curator of the gallery at the mill, takes a look back over some of its amazing history. Pandan Mill used to be a flour mill and its history goes back quite a bit. In fact, it was in the Doomsday Book there was a disastrous fire here in 1897, which destroyed the mill and the house only just managed to survive. It was rebuilt in a northern style in brick with the lovely cast iron columns going through it, which were a lot more fireproof than slatted wood. It was late summer in 1968 and it had rained most of that summer. Pound and Mill was in a sorry state. It looked neglected, derelict. But apart from that, it looked wonderful. <laughs> a sanctuary in Harlow. Then I probably made the best decision in my life. We were asked if we wanted to purchase the mill or rent it. Buy it, I said. Surely we'd get a mortgage somewhere. We got lots of enthusiastic help to clear it all up and deal with it. What we had was space, and we traded it for favours, for labour, and for people with machinery to do jobs we couldn't do by hand. And what we didn't have, we either found, or made, or were given, or grew. Originally, I'd envisaged artists from London coming out to use Pond and Mill because it was so difficult to find a studio in London. But just about that time, the GLC started up Space Limited, which was an organisation to rent studios in the old warehouses, which is now where Canary Wharf is, to artists for less than Harlow Council was charging us in rates. So we actually found designers and craftspeople who were making a living from their art and they moved in alongside the artists that were here who couldn't afford much and that was really the start of this unique collaboration that we have at Bindon between designers, architects, craftspeople and fine artists. Responsible for the day-to-day -day running of Pandan Mill is the extraordinary and dedicated project manager, Roger Lee, who recalls the years 
of ongoing restoration. Over the years, we've had a constant rolling programme of restoration. With the help of our craftspeople here, a carpenter, artist in metal, architects, structural design engineers, restoration has covered putting a new bed in the river, building a new bridge across the front of the mill, restoring massive holes in floors, uh, putting in fireproof petitions, making fire escapes, building new windows to match the originals. Both of the Lucums on the mill, now Lucum is, is an overhang, but on huge oak shelf brackets. Now those had rotted, and in 2002 we restored the one above the gallery. Two years ago, we realised that the one above the bridge was just about to collapse and we managed to get our green oak beams for the restoration of the Lucum from Palmden Wood and uh, getting it all up to, up to spec. Finding money for improvements was still a problem. But on New Year's Day 1970, we had a bit of a break. The phone rang and it was my agent who was selling pottery for me in London. Sally said, can you, can you do four and a half thousand square yards of tiles for a hotel in London? He described the design on the telephone, which was a simple brush stroke design. So I went out and bought a box of 54 tiles from a local builder's merchant did a different variation of this on each one and fired them and delivered them to his office. They were impressed with the speed and what I'd done and selected number one and we got the job. So we were in the tile business. Of course the thing that Sally never mentions is her incredible experience which was gained from our adventures in ceramic tiles and trompe l'oeil. We won design awards in the 1970s and the 1980s, three of them from the Design Council of Great Britain, and also a Design Industry Association Award um, back in 1990. Now that's relevant because that's where our enormous experience comes from, that 38 years of working in the commercial art field, if you like. Our 38 years on the tiles finished in 2004 and it was at that point we then converted the two floors of the mill and the various outbuildings that we used for our company into more studios for other creative people. The studios at Pandan Mill are unique in as much as the fine artists and craftspeople practice their skills alongside professional designers. There is often collaboration between these various disciplines which makes the enterprise even more dynamic and original. Pound and Mill different from many little art complexes is that we have all creative disciplines from architecture through to fine art and craft, you know, from metalworking to cabinet making to architecture to weaving to painting to printmaking to glass blowing, glass fusion, glass casting. It, the list goes on and on and every inch of Pound and Mill is full of somebody very creative doing something amazing and what excites both Sally and I is when you see two disciplines working together. An architect, you know, helping a, an artist in metal or um, helping a, the glass sculptor with some structural elements. 
Pond and Mill is a unique creative community in that we have such a wide variety of disciplines. It's quite a multicultural arrangement. It's not just local artists. We have a fantastic jeweler from Japan who is wife to John Lewis, our fabulous glass blower. We have a potter from Finland. We have David Rouse who makes classic and flamenco guitars for the world's leading concert performers. We're very fortunate to have top flight graphic designers here, Blue Pig. Our glass sculptor, Dr. Heike Brackler, is from Germany. And she represented Europe at a major symposium in China, you know, our Heike. We get very proud. <laughs> the classic examples of collaboration. You're passing Barry's workshop, Barry the Carpenter, and you see Chris Snow, the architect in there, Alan Freeman, the artist in metal, and they're all scratching their heads and working together to come up with a solution. And to see those three creative people working together, solving the problems and building the thing. Eva Wozniak working for a collector who had got this beautiful solid silver galleon about this size, which he wanted mounted on a sea cast in glass. So Eva, of course, cast her sea with all the beautiful colours in the glass. And then she needed a plinth to put it on, which needed to be uplit so that the, the glass underneath the ship glowed. So a little bit of electrical and lighting advice from myself. Barry the carpenter built the plinth. Sophie Arquette, who came to Pondon Mill to engage John Lewis, our glass blower, and Alan Freeman, our artist in metal, to assist her with a project which she was producing uh, in celebration of the Magna Carta. We worked with British Waterways, who were making the towpath from Royden to Harlow Town Station. And we put out to competition the proposals for sculptural pieces along the canal. Of course, the fabulous Weir Bridge, which is here adjacent to Palmer Mill. That was built by Alan Freeman and Karen Murphy, one of our glass artists, who had over the course of a year cast big chunks of cast glass, sort of telling the, the story of the environment, really. And Alan's steelwork is very organic, and the whole thing looks like it's grown out of the riverbank. But there, that collaboration, again, you know, that's what having the, the mixed disciplines all in one place can offer. And I just find that so exciting. Even with all their achievements, it doesn't stop there for Sally and Roger. Their vision for the future is fundamental to Pond and Mill's role in Harlow's community. Looking to the future, I see a need for more studio space. So we're talking with one of our resident architects about converting some of our derelict stable space to the back of the property and making some more studios. Converting the stable block into our dynamic new project space has proved to be very, very useful for the arts not only for seminars on discussing future projects for the arts in the area, as well as Panda Mill, but we run a series of art classes which are given by some of the artists here, as well as specialist lecturers from outside. Another future project which is really about engaging with younger audiences is to look at the potential of the original water turbine space in Palmer Mill, because of course it's a water mill. There's an old Francis Horizontal turbine there, but that's known technology. What I find exciting is what technology is doing today and what bright young minds can do, and what better way of cementing the synergy between the arts and sciences by creating a micro-turbine research facility to provide free access to education. The 
the gallery at Pounder Mill is front of house for the whole enterprise. We run a series of eight exhibitions a year. They're kind of a mix between one-man shows and themed exhibitions. We opened our doors to the public at an annual event called Open Studios, which is part of Essex Summer of Arts, which gives people an opportunity to understand what this other creativity is really all about. It's been both of our entire adult lives bringing this mission to the point it's at today. And you can't help but feel proud of your achievement. Somebody comes up with an idea, a creative idea, and we know that somewhere on this site there will be the knowledge. It is the excitement of the next exhibition in the gallery, these fantastic artists we've found. Um, oh, wouldn't it be great to put, you know, this particular painter with this potter or this glass artist, doesn't their work sing when you put it together? You know, it's, it's just being there at a the moment of creativity is just so exciting. <laughs> it's wonderful to see that exchange of ideas. It's what I get up for every day and I feel terribly spoiled but what excites me most about Panda Mill is its people. Panda Mill is a beautiful environment and we've put a lifetime's effort into restoring it and bringing it to what it is today but really what Panda Mill is about is the people. That's what makes Panda Mill.